Hello, good evening and welcome to Wolf News. The headlines tonight. Minister for Housing meets with architecture students at the University of Limerick. Mental Health Awareness Week begins on campus. And we speak to law professor Shenko Cummins about accountability and the tune scandal. Housing Minister Simon Coveney visited the University of Limerick to speak to architecture students about the Ireland 2040 framework plan. Dan Danner has more. Housing Minister Simon Coveney outlined the government's blueprint for a new Ireland at a UL seminar yesterday. However, Minister Coveney refused to lay even one brick on the canvas about his vision for the Fine Gael leadership. With Minister Coveney and Social Protection Minister Leo Varadkar neck and neck in Fine Gael leadership opinion polls, Dan Danaher spoke to the Cork Deputy about the government's economic plans. Some of those operations, uh, because you get fantastic value for money outside of Dublin and Ireland. Uh, we have a good motorway infrastructure now that can facilitate good connectivity. Uh, obviously Limerick has, a, has an international airport just down the road uh, and a very um, uh, successful commercial port as well. So, you know, Limerick has the ingredients for dramatic growth as a city generally. Um, financial services may be part of that growth. Um, but today is really about talking about the potential to realise that, um, that growth story over the next two decades. The Minister also spoke about rural development. People from the countryside into cities. We have an extra million people to accommodate. Right? So there's no shortage of people for cities and towns. Uh, most of the people who are living in rural Ireland who want to stay there, we'd like to keep them there. However, UL Socialist Party Chairman James Pittman takes a different view. For too long now, Fianna Gael and Fianna Fáil have continually failed us with policies of austerity and cut cuts to public services and the like. Uh, the time has now come for a radical change, and that change will not come from the right or the centre, it will come from the left. The jury is still out on the government's plans. Dan Danaher, Wolf News. A vigil was held on campus last night as part of the University of Limerick's Mental Health Week. It highlighted the alarming suicide rates among Irish students annually. Shane McNamara has the story. 131 candles flicker around the fountain. 131. The average number of Irish students who die by suicide each year. This vigil was held outside the Kemi Business School in remembrance of those lost. While last night remembered those gone, today focused very much on the drive to stop the cycle of suicide. So no one, no one chooses to die by suicide because they want to. They, ch they choose it because they can't see a way out. They've just given up hope and they don't know where to turn. Yeah, last night we thought we looked at, at kind of the solemn side of it, like even down to the point where when we did the lanterns, we did two candles and each one signified that you're never alone. People don't want people dying by suicide. People want people to talk about the issues of mental health. They want the care. They want to be supportive. A HSE-funded survey found that one in three LGBT teenagers felt suicidal, as well as 21% of the LGBT community in Ireland attempting suicide last year. Um, suicide is such a big issue for the LGBTQ community, particularly in Ireland. I mean, you look somewhere like on UL campus, there's so many LGBTQ people, some of them still aren't out, but I mean, it's just showing LGBTQ people that there, are, there is support out there, that there are positive thoughts. And when you look at suicide rates, self-harm rates, they're, they're much raised for the LGBTQ people. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of straight people don't actually think about that. And I suppose, what, why would you? But this is about making people aware of that and making people aware of the services that are out there. Shane McNamara, SU Courtyard for Wolf News. Professor Shane Kilcommons of the University of Limerick has gained national attention with his commentary on the Tomb Baby scandal. We sent Dane Staunton to speak to him. Given that the Catholic Church has come under fire recently following the Tomb Baby scandal, I'm here with law professor Shane Kilcommons to see whether the church should be solely held accountable. Much of the responsibility relies, um, or, you know, has to vest in the institutions themselves, but also the state, and the state was complicit through through its silence and through its failure to intervene, or its failure even to challenge. But um, I think it's also significant that even from a societal perspective that nobody judicially reviewed this, nobody took cases. I mean, the idea of your right to liberty has existed for a very, very long time. It's one of the oldest rights. No cases were taken by citizens, By you know, the, there was very little access to the justice system and so on. So my worry would be that we look back in the past and uh, uh, you know, and view it through a lens which basically says that it's just 
the church that's at fault or it's just the state. So we were locking up all these people in 1956 per 100,000 of the population. So there's 29,500 psychiatric hospitals, there was 1,800 in Mighty and Laundries and County Homes, uh, there was only about 300 in our prisons. But why wasn't the media you know, picking up on this story? The stories were never really being picked up or the horrors of the abuse and so on. We weren't going in there into those institutions and seeing what was happening. So I think that you know, it should make us more committed to ensuring that institutions today, like where, where persons with intellectual disabilities were kept, that um, that they're properly protected, that there's a, a lot of transparency in, in around how they operate. Um, so I think that would be very, very important. I'm Dane Staunton for Wolf News. The Irish World Music and Dance Academy hosted students from Castle Troy College in the University of Limerick today as part of their lunchtime concert series. Dan Danaher went to check it out. Reaching out to the community. The World Music Academy is in tune with fostering talent in schools and community groups. I think it's a very valuable learning experience for them as well to come and perform in public and to leave their own normal school environment. I think it's great to be here after all the practice that we've put in and like all the time that we spent during and after school and it's just really invigorating and exhilarating to be here in such like a well-renowned and well-known place. I think it's really fun and amazing because we only started playing the ukulele in January and it's just so different from what it was. Like we've improved so much. I can't believe we get to do this. It's so much fun and I just really would love to do it again. Wolf TV has just witnessed some of the stars of the future. It's back to the studio. Next, we go over to David Byrne at the sports desk. In soccer news, Leicester City wrote another chapter in the remarkable story as they overturned the first leg deficit to beat Sevilla and reached the Champions League quarterfinals. In horse racing, Limerick's JP McManus was the big winner on day one of the Cheltenham Festival with the first two home in the day's feature, the Champion Hurdle. In GA circles, the University of Limerick ladies football team claimed the third O'Connor Cup crown in four seasons after victory over UCC in Elvery's MacHale Park in Castlebar on Sunday. In our main sports story, we look at rugby. Japan under-19s begin their tour of Ireland to mark their 60-year relationship with Ireland. Limerick's Thoman Park hosts tonight's game against Munster under-19s at 6pm. Our reporter Fiona Reedy has more. Young saplings, soon to blossom into future stars of the 2019 Rugby World Cup. Tonight, they are visitors to the hallowed ground of Thoman Park, which is a venue in Ireland's proposal to host the 2023 Rugby World Cup. We want to be at 100% for the match. Um, training's gone very well so far, and I think we're there now. So, rugby's becoming popular in Japan. Uh, Everybody's excited to host the World Cup and also due to the 2015 Rugby World Cup. Uh, since then, rugby's been becoming popular. Hope to Munster head coach Mark Butler ahead of tonight's game. It'll be massive and, um, you know, obviously with the Japanese um, hosting the World Cup in 2019, we're looking to make a good impression here with this Japanese tour inside. Um, they're based in the facilities here in UL. And I think that if we did win the, win the bid to host the World Cup in 2023, we'd be looking to host uh, an international side here again. There seems to be a very strong link between New Zealand rugby and, and Munster rugby. There's a lot of proud tradition there from both sides. Um, you know, I thought the, the Maori, when they came over in November, were absolutely fantastic and their, their tribute to Axel was pretty special. So yeah, I, I guess we'd like to think we'd be in a strong position to host the All Blacks again. The future is bright for rugby in the land of the rising sun. A very good evening to you. A bit of a mixed bag for the weather today. A warm front from the Atlantic brought mild sunny weather to the country, with patches of mist, fog and drizzle spreading across the country this evening. A southerly wind will bring fresh gusty weather from the northeast. Tonight will be mild and breezy with lows of 6 to 9 degrees with some persistent rain developing in the western half of the country. Tomorrow will be mainly cloudy and misty to start 
with scattered outbreaks of rain but brightening later in the day. A little cooler tomorrow with temperatures between 10 and 12 degrees. That's all from here, back to Paul. Thanks Amy. The headlines again tonight. The Minister for Housing meets with architecture students at the University of Limerick. Mental Health Awareness Week begins on campus. And we speak to law professor Shenko Cummins about accountability and the tune scandal. That's all from Wolf News this evening. Thanks for joining us.